the example that we had looked at in our previous video is called unicasting, meaning a sender is able to send a message to one receiver. There could be instances where we might want to send information to multiple parties who are interested to listen to your message. That's where multicasting come into picture. In our sender program, I mean the program that actually broadcasts a message, we're going to create an instance of multicast socket instead of a datagram socket, which we did in case of unicast. Once we have this, we can send the data by creating a packet of information. That's all there is to it. There's one little addition to this. Instead of localhost, you're going to have to use an IP address within this range. These are the addresses used for multicasting. Only when you send a message from these IP addresses will it be multicasted. On the receiver side, I'm just taking a command line argument. You'll see in a minute why it's useful. I'm going to again create a multicast socket to which I want to listen. And there's something called join group. So if I send the command line argument as this, then this particular instance of client program is going to join this multicasting group. You'll understand how it works in a minute. And rest of the code is something that you're already aware. We're creating a packet, an empty packet, to read the data that we receive and then display it. In the end, we're, we have to take care of leaving the group and uh, close the socket. All right, let's take a look at this program in action. I'm going to have multiple command processors open. And in each one of them, I'm going to have this receiver program run. So do take a note of the command line argument I'm sending. This is the same IP which I have specified over here. Let's run it. Alright, now let's broadcast the message. So on both these windows, you see that message getting displayed. All the receivers who joined in the same group have received. Now let's see if the receiver is going to receive the message if he's joining to a different group, say 10. And let this guy be in the same group. Let's run the program. As you can guess, this receiver is not going to receive that message. So that's how multicasting works. Only interested parties will be able to receive the message. And there is something called broadcast in UDP. Using broadcast socket, you can literally broadcast a message to all the computers in the network. But ideally, in real time, it's always recommended that we use multicasting. For one good reason, the message uh, would not reach to unintended audience. Hope that's clear. See you in my next video.